And everybody and welcome to take your time a persona 5 podcast where we play persona 5 royal in real time along with the in-game calendar dates and boy oh boy we only really get to say that there's not many more times because we're reaching the end of it uh my name is tom marks joined as always by the wonderful jonathan dornbush john i almost got through that it's fine well. you know i mean how are you jonathan <laughs> i you know i constantly think about how my name has too many syllables so yeah. i don't blame you uh i am like five that's it that's too so many. many who uh, it's more so i think the repetition of certain vowel sounds and such but that's a discussion for our other podcast where we dig into the etymology of both of our names every week yeah. um yeah no i'm doing well i'm very excited to be talking about uh our it's weird it's weird to be saying like our last palace i think i don't know how the rest of the game goes but like oh. I, what i assume is our last palace whoa there's spoilers tw- there's 12 more it's like pokemon gold and silver we got to the end and we have to play <laughs> double the game um but no yeah, yeah that's it's, the thing they don't tell you you is it just like the original pokemon games you unlock a new region where awesome. it's just you get to explore the world of p4g but like without the story perfect yeah that's the ideal i think for a persona game without the story yeah. um so no no one plays the games for the story or character no uh but no yeah it's it's really exciting to be here it's so weird um I was talking to a friend of the show, Barrett Courtney, about it. It's just so funny to have been here. This is not a house joke, I swear. Uh, it's so funny to be here and really not have been spoiled about all this. Like, first of all, shout out to That's all of great. our wonderful listeners who have, like, have been wonderful about not spoiling things on the whole. Like, it's just been really easy for me to not be able to, you know, see anything coming later. And yeah, I like, I'm just super excited to get into it because it's, I, I know we're getting near the end and it feels weird to say that, but yeah. So, so we are going to go over the palace this week. Yes. Uh, and then as we learn this week more explicitly, you have to, similar to the Shido deadline, you have to wait. It's the Shido deadline, right? No, I no, no so. not the Shido deadline. It, it's the Psy deadline. Thank you. Uh, Thank okay. you, Tom. Uh, the Psy, similar <laughs> to the Psy like, deadline. why are you thanking me? You have to wait to the end of the deadline time to actually send the calling card and do the final fight and all that stuff. Um, Quick question, and I swear to God, this is not a leading question. I genuinely am curious. Mm -hmm. We haven't been spoiled on stuff again, which is great. Mm -hmm. Are you personally playing this game right now expecting some sort of finale twist? Are you bracing yourself for anything are you, do you think that the, the, the kind of like big reveals have been big revealed? Like, you know what I mean? And I, I swear that's not trying to lead you in the direction of like. There is or there isn't, sure. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, well, now I assume there obviously is. No, uh, <laughs> I genuinely, I haven't really given it much thought because I okay. kind of. you just along for the ride. Yeah. When I cool. am really into a story, it's very funny. Like my girlfriend is phenomenal at guessing twists and things like to the point where we're five minutes into a show and she can guess basically what's going to happen. Sure. I, I like I love dissecting story and digging into story and character, obviously, other, otherwise I wouldn't have done the show. <laughs> but I kind of don't think too far ahead unless I've, cool. you know, experienced a full story. So for me, I'm kind of just like, I am excited to see how this palace ends. I know so, the, the general ending of five. And that's about like, that's about it where it stands. It's like I'm expecting maybe some slight variation on that because they have to give some ending to the new stuff but other than that i'm kind of like i just want to see what dealing with maruki is like at the end specifically i guess i asked because your state of mind as we were going into all this persona the royal stuff was like maruki said a word funny i'm gonna note that (laughs) down like you were very looking for that stuff yeah i mean like i will i will look for it as it happens but i don't necessarily like unless it's i guess a mystery story like unless the point sure. is a mystery i don't try to piece it together too much like I've, you're not you're not as much on high alert right now exactly yeah, yeah which um could be good could be bad like legitimately i have no idea what happens next week um again i was just trying to gauge no totally where you were from then so. i think i think because that was at the start of literally not knowing anything and now that i understand uh-huh. the framework of how this reality yeah, yeah. is working and stuff like that i'm more into the like okay we got to stop him and that's sort of just where my head's at right now. Yeah, you have a, you have a you have a direction, you have a path yes. that we're on, right? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh well, let's get into that path because we got a, a ton to talk about. First, let's do some I guess actually some housekeeping stuff, which is we had a pop quiz from last week. 
uh, and we had some great guesses from folk. I asked uh, that there's a mementos line when you're walking around talking to people with a catchy, uh, or not talking to people when people are just talking while you're driving around. And Akechi asks, uh, or says something along the lines of, if you're looking for a way to train both your body and your mind, or your mind and your body, he says mind first, which I think is very telling for him. Oh, yeah. Um, what does he recommend? Jonathan, I think you looked through some comments, so you, you might have seen the answer. We did get some good responses. Yeah, it, uh, I, it did ruin my original guess of Magic the Gathering, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Magic is really popular in Japan, actually. So. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, it is. Okay. It's very, very popular there. So that actually, like, I mean, besides the licensing thing. Like, sure, yeah. Wouldn't uh, be far off, probably. Uh, anyway. Gr- uh, excuse me. Uh, Gadget the Mathering. There we go. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, it would be like, it would be like Wizardry the Grouping or something Ooh, like that. Ooh, there we go. That one's good. Anyway. Yeah. Um, the, so the first thing is. Uh, our first response we got, or not first, but yes, a lot of people got this correct. Uh, Thomas said, haven't gotten the dialogue for the quiz, but I'm going to guess he suggests long walks on the beach with Joker. That's a, a very good guess. Yes. Um, Hannah did get it correct. Uh, and also Cat of Artichoke and Amy also guessed this, got the correct answer, which is, I know Akechi likes bouldering. <laughs> So I'm guessing that's what he was talking about with the Mementos dialogue, and that is correct. Akechi suggests bouldering. Is is that just like rock climbing? Or bouldering is rock climbing without like a rope or anything. Oh, okay. Uh, so g- generally uh lower stakes, right? Sure. Like you're you're uh I think when it's like high stakes, when you're like really climbing high, it's called free climbing, I believe. Oh, okay. Um I might be wrong about that, but I do know that bouldering is without a rope, without any harness or anything, and usually you're only going up, like, you know, in a gym sort of thing, generally. But people do it on actual rock walls. Well, sure, of course. Because people are crazy and cool. (laughs) That's how you train your mind. You freak yourself out that you may die. And then, yeah. I mean, it's not a bad recommendation, to be frank. But uh, there you go. Akechi's into bouldering. <laughs> it, the um, way you said it sounded dirty, but keep going anyway. Uh, and then Siddharth guessed, this is a joke answer, so I'm going to guess that Akechi, Akechi suggests pancakes for improving mind and body. Uh, there's actually one dialogue conversation with Mentos with the group mentioning pancakes and says Akechi says he never wants to hear that word again. That is actually what I was also going to bring up. Akechi will randomly just say pancakes. I don't want to hear that that word again for a long, long time. Oh and then people God. will respond to him. Uh, and my favorite of the responses is Ryuji, who says, well, we're all fans since that's what helped us figure out your bullshit. <laughs> that is so good. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, goodness. It's just like Ryuji killing it right there. That's so good. I think I need to find it, but I do feel like there was a... I'm going to make sure I don't miss it in my notes, but I feel like there was a very interesting Ryuji moment in the in the palace, but I'll, I'll try and find it. Okay. Um, uh, oh, there's... oh, excuse me. No, it was on a text chain. I'll, I'll bring that up as the week goes by. Anyway. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we also got some viewer comments. Jonathan, you want to read some of those? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, of course, thank you to everyone who continues to uh, write in on the comments. I need. I forgot to check the email before this, so there's possible there's an email I've missed, so I'll keep that in mind for next week. Uh, but you can, of course, uh, email dornology at gmail.com with questions, or you can write in on the YouTube comments for each week's episode. You can go to youtube.com slash dornology to do that every week and see our lovely Sunday morning faces. Uh, in addition to that, though, <laughs> some of the comments from this week, uh, Zenpai said... A uh, quick trophy convo from last week had me thinking, are you planning to platinum the game? I believe I got it this time around because a full compendium wasn't required, which is a base P5 requirement. Uh, and Tom, you, you've you obviously played P5, uh, P5 Royal before. You platinumed it your first time, right? I did. Um, I am definitely going for the platinum because I think right now I just have to finish the palaces and beat the game. So, well, I think we had that discussion of, like, how some people have beaten the game but not finished all the palaces because of the weird yeah, uh, yeah. requirements. Because you can skip Maruki by accident. Yeah, the, um, the platinum for this game is not... I'm not going to say, like, easy-easy, because you do have to, like, you know, 
be going for it in certain circumstances to get some of the little bit more obscure ones. Like if you just like never go batting or whatever because you don't want to go batting, then like or the maid cafe, yeah, or the maid cafe, like that little stuff. But yeah, it's not like it's not hard, right? If you just like want to do it. Compared to the base P five one, it is like child's play it is yeah, you're yes, right it takes yes. time and there are things you need to do throughout the game that you do need to pay attention to to keep it up but yeah like on the whole i never platinumed uh base persona 5 patron say to the podcast andrew Gofar platinumed it both in japanese and english um sure. because he is incredible but um yeah i could never do it mostly because i was just so into playing it the first time and that was at a point in my life where i was like play a hundred plus hour rpg again i don't think so my friends i'm good for now and then here we are but uh (laughs) yeah on the whole i i also like this is a total side tangent i like i have very deep complex thoughts about trophies and the the way trophy lists are created i think the p5 one is a more fair list as well that like doesn't take away enjoyment from a first playthrough, but is still achievable on a first playthrough. Sure. Whereas I think on P5, the base game, I don't remember all the specifics, but I think you kind of need to play almost perfectly to get it. (laughs) Yeah, and I think you, like, need to do some other stuff. Like, compendium-wise, I uh, learned a hard lesson this week, so we can talk about that later. Yeah, definitely. Um, In addition to that, uh, Amy also pointed out a fun Akechi Oya scene at the aquarium uh because i had said i'd never been let me go find that i forgot to import the whole answer um so i guess slight details for a or spoilers for a scene that would have happened in july uh they they linked to it in the youtube comments of last week uh just one of those fun confident crossover scenes uh where you're on one of those not dates with a catchy uh and it's crashed by oya if you go to the aquarium uh, not many players see this one uh amy said because it relies on you befriending oya pretty early in your ability to do so uh, but fun little fact about the scene, if you tell a catchy that the aquarium is a good place to take girls, he does not like it, and you get zero points. And the romance continues to blossom. But yeah, it's a... Uh, <laughs> what an amazing little detail to pull I know. out of that. Uh, it's really, really funny. But yeah, I, I never got to see that, but that's good to know. I, I definitely uh, will watch it after we record. Uh, and then the other, there were a bunch of great comments, but I uh, just wanted to touch on this last one. Uh, Oscar said, to touch on Jonathan's point of confidence and romancing, I actually decided to romance Kasumi Sumire on my initial playthrough, but since her confidant is locked to rank 5 into the royal content, I couldn't start the romance until then. Because of this, I missed out on romance-specific cutscenes, like the Christmas one uh, that happens before the new content and didn't even realize it since it was my first playthrough. Uh, needless to say, and they don't really spoil it, but the few other cutscenes that happened near the end game made me question even the worth of romancing in general. Um, and so... I, I, I can definitely see that on, like, a first playthrough, choosing to go for that romance, especially because the game pushes you that way, means you miss out on some of the more fun moments. And I think... Yeah. Also, like, again, I do think that uh, romance in general is not a huge thing once it happens in the game. But I, sure. I like to then have in my head canon the idea of all of the, you know phantom thieves interactions if i'm you know while i'm dating makoto for example this run like when she pipes up it's like oh yeah because she and joker are dating and she's saying this to because they support each other well and and joker supports her and blah 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 but like you don't really get that if you're not dating so you know that's just me having fun with the game it's almost like it's a role-playing game i mean but to be fair everything's a role-playing game these days (laughs) Anyway, uh, thank you to everyone else who also commented on the show. A ton of great stuff. I'm going to go through and reply to some of them uh, on the YouTube channel itself. But yeah, thank you for everyone who continues to to write in and hang out with us every week. But we've got a big week. We're yes, talk yes, about we the do. Palace, which is actually going to be kind of a straightforward discussion because this palace is like, now that we're actually in it, like kind of a straightforward palace. But it's a cool one and there's a lot to talk about. Uh, yeah. So let's jump into the week of January 24th to January 30th. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we're, we're literal days away from the deadline at this point. I can't believe it. I know. It's pretty exciting. <sighs> yeah. It's strange. So, it's very strange. Go Jonathan. Yes. Not having any idea what uh-huh. he did on January 24th. 
What did you do on January 24th? Well, I thought it was really interesting that while you're on the train or whatever, it's snowing and there's no crime happening. Someone just, I wrote in my notes, snow and no crime. I think someone's like, man, <laughs> everything's great in the country right now. Everything seems to be going well. And so I was like, great, I'm going to go take down Maruki. So I went to the palace first thing this week. Oh, I guess I also skipped it. There was a quiz. Wait. Oh, yes. A quiz about, um, yeah. like, English slang. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. was a quiz about salty, what salty means. Yeah. And then they also bring up the term frenemy, which is definitely uh, a reference to Akechi. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, yeah it, it's a cute quiz in that way because it is also the thing of like, obviously, if you're an English speak- speaker, it's an easier quiz than not. Sure. Uh, if, you know, that slang isn't used elsewhere, which I feel like salty probably is at this point. But yeah, I don't know. Eh. But anyway, anyway, I went to the palace. <laughs> palace. Let's let's just jump right in. Cool. Because let's do this it. is first day of your week, and uh, it's what everyone is here for. So let's get into the palace. Uh, the palace. Now the palace is basically split into like sort of four and a half sections, right? Mm-hmm. Of varying size and length and content. Uh, yeah. The first two of which are really not super interesting necessarily they're basic palace for me the the second half of this palace is way more interesting to discuss on like a granular level the beginning is basically like get get through the area beat the enemies occasionally solve a puzzle to get through a door um yeah and then there's there's the videotape stuff that comes up yes uh, and there's all the videotapes of maruki's memories where we get a bunch of it back kind of uh pretty overt just sort of like backstory about what happened to him what informed his decisions right um, yeah generally speaking though you know we've already been in this palace like three times or whatever and yeah. we've already played basically as much as we played today or for this palace trip in other sections of this palace yeah um but this is like the traditional palace part like what did you think of it generally Excuse me, I, overall. I mean, I I liked that setup in terms of we, we came back, as we've discussed on the show, multiple times. Yeah. Um, and always saw a little bit new to the palace. And then this time on the proper palace infiltration, I was kind of worried it was just going to be a bunch more white rooms. Sure. That we go through for a while, but it's not. And, um, you know, this the beginning areas aside, I think the videotape stuff kept me interested as we were going. There was some like decent figuring out how to get around the environment puzzles um, right. th- that were fun enough. But I think as the, the palace gets better as it goes along. And I think the last stuff is, is really interesting in its combination of sort of like palace puzzle work, palace layout and, and palace fights um, as a sort of intermarriage of, of ways to be obstacles. For you. Now speaking of fights, yes, just to, just to start this off, sure, uh, let's do that. Yeah, did you have to? Did you have to fight basically anyone? <laughs> Toward the end, there were a couple, <laughs> mostly because I'm I I wasn't rushing them. But yeah, in the first, I was I, I was so surprised. Like this is the, we we talked about this last week and how the Mementos area felt slightly lower level than it felt like you should be at that point. Yeah. And this sort of felt the same to me, where it was like, I didn't feel like I was grinding or over-leveling, except for that one point where I literally did grind just to test something out, but, like, I only did a little bit of that, right? Like, and it just felt like I did not fight barely anybody except for, like, lots of Fafnirs. (laughs) Oh, yeah, they were always the roadblock. Yeah. Um, which should make, I guess, my persona pseudonym for this week fun if you didn't see half the personas. Oh, yeah. But, I have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> but, yeah. No, I mean, on the whole, it's it's hard for me to say because I also know that we're coming in from it from a, from the perspective of having both played some form of Persona 5 before. Sure. Um, sure you sure, sure. having played Royal, me playing the base game. And I do think there is that imperative to want to make sure we're leveled enough for it to not be a pain. Um and, cer- and certainly before this, like, I, I had spent the, all that time in Mementos last week, so no one was below, like, level 93, probably. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, yeah, it fighting became less of a thing other than those roadblock fights where it is you need to go through this tougher enemy to, to pass by. And then a few I, a few later on, I think I kind of let happen just to see how these, these personas were. Um, but definitely the fighting element of it, I think took a backseat to exploration and, and puzzle solving throughout. Yeah. Um, which I'm, yeah. I'm okay with because it is to be fair at the end of the day, you know, a hundred plus hours in 
can vary widely for some it's 110 for some it's 160 like it can vary widely how where you are but you're dozens of hours into this game i do think they didn't want to throw too many crazy new fighting mechanics in there at the very end sure and so it's 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 an okay trade-off that you're kind of blowing through these guys quickly one of the things i do appreciate mechanically is i feel like almost every enemy is resistant to shock and so it's like if you're like me and has just been abusing shock the entire game they're like nah you can't do that (laughs) these enemies have no weaknesses yeah they all can't be shocked and figure out something else and i was like okay Uh, yeah i think when it comes to the fight some of the biggest stuff is just more making it like okay you can't just cheese your way through most of these fights like you really do need to be using uh buffs and debuffs and uh a life smart wall. yeah exact god yeah life wall um <laughs> i wish i had i will say this i went to i like without spoiling it too much i went to the jazz club almost every night i yeah. wish i had waited to do the palace and gone to the jazz club every night with haru so that she had like double the sp because oh my god does that thing sap her sp so quickly yeah we're, we can talk about it later but there is a uh one night in the jazz club right that gives you the spell master ability yeah which like yeah, uh, we'll talk about that later because I had to do a funny thing for that. But uh, okay. moving on, yeah. Um, the thing I like about this palace is that it slowly exposes kind of m- how Maruki's thinking is actually fundamentally bad. Yeah. Right. Like up until this point, with a lot of his stuff, you, you it was a gray area. You could kind of see it from his perspective, but you didn't, you know, you didn't want to live in his reality. But you could understand that he was trying to help people. What I like about this palace is that it sort of makes it more abundantly clear that he is imposing a like his biased point of view onto how the world should be in a way that is wrong, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's the... not like he hasn't it's not like he hasn't done anything before this that is questionable, but like it makes it explicit this time. 100%. Uh, yeah, hands down, I think the story stuff is the most interesting part of the palace. And I think it's really well told and then also integrated as you get later in. Like, the videotapes are one thing, but I think when you get to the sort of processing uh, therapy session and, and the quiz yeah. questions, and then the sort of, you know, uh, the puzzle after that, plus the slight spoilers, I guess, for 20 minutes from now, but sort of the Garden of Eden that you essentially get into. Right. It is very clear that he has gone off the deep end when it comes to this stuff. Like, he is he is thinking from a very personally maligned place. And as much as there may be some good in there, like, I do genuinely think some of it comes from a good place. Yeah, but it definitely. is also coming from a warped perspective that is 100% due to him being embittered about, you know, transgressions against him. Yeah, and that's and that's something right like that we know right like the the palaces are distorted desires right yeah. so like it makes sense that this is that he may not necessarily be like evil but is wildly out of whack right now yeah um, and there's a lot of little hints of that so like this first area that we're in which we'll talk about real quick is um, you know it's really simple it's basically just a locked door and there's a by you know like basically the like what's your mother's maiden name version of like more personal palace version of that uh, and you got to go find the videotape that then tells you what his mother's maiden name is to unlock the door um not literally but anyway uh <laughs> the the thing i like about this area is it's really small but there are these hallways that in, in a couple spots of it where if you go on the right side of the hallway it'll give you like a big green like good sign and if you go on the left in the wrong side of the hallway it'll give you like an a red like x which is like already seeding the idea that they kind of embrace later which is this like this concept of if you're not going through this palace the way maruki wants you to or mm-hmm. expects you to he sees that as incorrect yeah right? Like, and that's an idea that is made explicit in the exam section coming up, but, like, I love that they see that visually with something that does not matter, right? Just, like, a little pop-up early, early on. Well, and and I think it also ties into we're in a really interesting place where he has essentially invited us to come try and do this. Like, he is very aware that, or at least his cognition is, that we're going to be trying to steal his desire. Yes. Um, And I think... I do, you know, I guess you could argue up to this point, and I don't know until we finally get there, but I do genuinely genuinely think some of it is the cognition thinks their point of view is so strong and that their case is so strong 
that they will be able to convince us that this is the right way. Like, I, right. I do think it is a not, they're not just saying, oh, we're going to have to kill you or whatever. I think Maruki does want to genuinely change them and thinks that they can do so. And so, yes. yeah, to, to show from minute one kind of that his way is the right way, I think is, is such a, a good through line for this palace. Yeah. So there's this first area that's kind of nondescript and white. Um, and then the first tape you get is a younger Maruki, right, uh, talking to Rumi, who was at the time like his girlfriend or his lover or whatever, um, that in bed, who has just gone through, which we learned about previously, right, mm-hmm. through the confidant line with him. Yeah. Uh, that this is this woman that uh, went through this terrible traumatic accident, lost her, her parents, and was scarred mentally from it. And couldn't get over that couldn't work through that was having the doctor was saying you know like ptsd basically flashbacks to this horrible incident that she had to go that she went through um and marky desperate to try to figure out how to help her starts to hear a little bit of like a creepy voice and then wishes that she could just forget everything that happened and then boom suddenly she does and she no longer remembers him either yeah. And uh, she is suddenly much happier because she doesn't remember what happened. And in fact, she believes that like her parents died when she was very young and she's been living with her grandma and she's your grandparents. And she's just there because she just had surgery and then also doesn't remember Mar- Maruki. Um, and so Maruki basically decides, I'm just going to let her be happy and I'm going to leave. And I don't know what just happened, but apparently I just did this. So... Uh, she's happy now and that's all that matters goodbye and bails yeah um Um, so that's the first tape and is interesting because one of the big questions here with maruki also is like when did he figure out he could do this and has he been doing it intentionally or not and this is the first moment and he definitely did it unintentionally but also wanted it to happen right yeah um I, I thought this scene was really interesting and I'm glad we didn't have to wait to kind of get more payoff to his whole backstory. Like I was a little worried it would be held for the, I'm sure there might be some more stuff, but um, sure. held for the final sort of boss encounter stuff. Because I do think the through line that we get through all these videotapes is so interesting, especially as you were saying, I think it's important and helps see it again, sort of the the interesting side of this villain that he isn't doing all this maliciously that he wasn't doing it from the start for evil intentions like it's it is a bad thing to mess with someone's literal perception of reality i'm not saying it isn't but he didn't do it at first on purpose um yeah it it was a power that he accidentally sort of awakened to his voice was like you must seek me in the background definitely not evilly uh and so for him to go through this for him to have to decide to let sort of his beloved go in this way um and that trade off of her happiness but also not having happiness together i think is a really interesting layer to to that foundation of where he got his powers and also makes sense for why he continues to kind of act the way he does going forward sure um Uh, yeah this the second area is basically just like an office space it's similar to what we were talking about at the beginning the first half of this palace is really kind of nondescript um, so you get this office space, they seed this idea of the flowers and the lights that make them change colors, right? Like, but just sort of flavor-wise, and it's not actually relevant in that point, that comes up later. Mm-hmm. Um, and we get the second tape, and the second tape is him having lunch with that dude that we ran into in that confidant line at one point, Shibusawa. Yeah. Um, and basically it's just... Marky telling us what we already know which is that this was like the least interesting one to me right because it's just him being like my research was shut down they said that I couldn't provide evidence like hard evidence for it and so they shut it down and I'm mad but I'll do (laughs) anything I can I will save the world and I will finish my research right and so it's basically him being spurred on by the adversity of being shut down to keep going I think probably the the biggest sort of confirmation thing, because forgive me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it's been explicitly stated to this point, but this is sort of, by this point, we now know that the the stadium was where a research facility was meant to be built. Um, 
Oh, that yeah, that might have gotten confirmation. Here. Yeah, that that was something that he because uh, I have it written down here that that basically is uh, what happened, and he mentions the research facility here and that they didn't have enough concrete evidence, which is like the big deal um, that yeah. you have to have to answer for one of the doors later. Um, so it, it just sort of gives you the the reason why the stadium I think is is the place that you've been coming back to seem to be the biggest deal. But I I, I agree. This is sort of I think more just seeding his. Uh, his desperation and his his right. loss of of good footing, like th- this, helps explain his decline into wanting to be so manipulative, but thinking he's doing it for altruistic reasons. Yeah, it also explains how he went from being like a school professor to, or, or like a like a college kind of research kid guy to like a, you know, just like a student counselor. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, there there's just a funny moment where essentially he's having that the drinks with Shibusawa and then he goes away and then it's a cut and he's just surrounded by drinks on the table. <laughs> it's like, Oh, yeah. he's having a bad night. And, and I think he like promises Rumi that he'll rescue everyone in the same way he rescued her, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's, I think this is more just to help like seed info to the Phantom Thieves, whether or not it's information we as the player might already have or assume. Yeah. So next we get to the first of the kind of two more interesting palace areas. I'd yeah. say, which is the exam area, um, which is really cool conceptually. And essentially what it is is it's this series of three quizzes where they ask a question and then they say, okay, you, we have to think about... The, the, the whole process is to weed out incorrect thoughts, basically, right? It's very, like, thought police weirdness. And... The way you have to solve it is by thinking about what Maruki would actually, like, what he would personally say and what he would personally think is correct in that situation, which is great story-wise because it, again, explicitly makes clear that it's not about what actually matters because they bring up a couple times in these exam questions, like, none of these seem wrong necessarily. They're just different choices to make. But the correct answer is always whatever Maruki decides. Yeah. And, like, that's the really, really first big indication to me of, like, oh, this is, like, like, it's not really him just trying to, like, make everyone happy. It's him trying to make everyone happy in exactly the way he defines happiness and they have no say in it. Yeah. I mean, it always brings me back to, it's funny how much it stuck with me because a lot of the text change I I think can be fun, but light and and kind of superfluous. But that whole discussion of the student from Yusuke's uh, class who who wanted to be one thing and then was essentially forced to be another by this reality. um, It's because in Maruki's mind, it meant less pain but it doesn't mean that's what the person would be happiest with it's just what maruki thinks they'll be happiest with so yeah i think as you said maybe you were you were hinting at this but like conceptually i think this part is great mechanically it's a little bit of a slog Um, it's a little clunky yeah i like i i do think it's hindered a little bit just by the way i think conversations and things happen within the game um and so for that reason, it can kind of go on a little bit where you're like, okay, well, I know the right answer or whatever. But I do yeah, think it's, a, it's, it's well, I enjoy it as like an overall thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting for sure. It is a little bit laborious because you have to talk to each person that has some sort of like response, right? About like, oh, what would I do? And it's like a kind of indicating cognitively what this person would do for Maruki's brain or whatever, because they're yeah. all cognitive people. Um, and then after you talk to each person, you have to go to this little room uh, and discuss with the team and you have to say, okay, let's decide our answer and have everybody present all this information. And then you can leave and go take an elevator. And it's like, it ta- you have to go through those steps, which is a by, little annoying. Sorry, I was going to say, by at least the second one, you don't have to listen to everyone again. Oh, really? In the, yeah, you can just say, what's the answer? And then go. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, Sorry, That's yeah. what I meant. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. But yeah, you do have to at least confer with everyone. Yeah. And and I will say, that's annoying to me. But at the same time, like, there are definitely... Those conversations definitely inform a lot of the thinking that Maruki has in interesting ways. Yeah. And also genuinely changed what I thought the answer would be a couple times. Because me too. they phrase things very specifically where it's like, okay, you know... 
for the first question of like your friend is being led away by creepy people do you go run and help them or do you go get help from someone else like intuitively i was like oh he marky would go run and help them right because he is trying to make a difference in the world himself right but then the things that brought get brought up i think miss specifically by akechi this time is marky wants to limit pain in all cases and what they kind of talk about right is like well the either way this is a good choice and could work but if you run in you might get hurt and marky is so concerned about not of uh, him not getting hurt and not people not being hurt that his answer is, oh, well, you'd go get someone else to do it for you, right? Yeah. I, Which I, is not what I would have intuitively said. No, 100%. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where it's like, I think the process of going through and having to be like, well, we should go to that other obvious room and and then check in. Like, I I don't even know exactly what I think would be the smoother process, but I do think there sure. is a certain way to do it a bit more smoothly. But, at, like, I do think a lot of those conversations, like you said, are really interesting. And I, I think it further solidifies the idea that, like, it's not just that he's trying to avoid pain for everyone, but when it comes to the person who is the subject, like when it is the subject matter, that person's lack of pain or the ability to prevent pain supersedes anyone else in that conversation, even though technically if he was looking at it from the other person's perspective, he would want their pain to be... Like, I think it brings up the faultiness of his thinking, where it's essentially like the, yeah. the person who is the main protagonist of this anecdote you need to prevent their pain the most, even if it might cause other people pain. But Maruki isn't thinking outside of that person's perspective. And I think because of his power, would just be like, well, I can just find a way to solve their pain too afterwards. So it's fine. Right. Um, right. But yeah, I, I did love these conversations in that way because totally I would have chosen wrong that first question. I think had I not had that combo with the group. Yeah, um, definitely. I think they also slow this whole process down because they don't want you just, like, randomly picking elevators exactly. and going through it. Yeah. Because, to be frank, the punishment for picking wrong is incredibly minimal, right? Yep. Like, it's just, like, a fight. <laughs> and not a and, hard like, one, usually. Yeah, it's not, like, a crazy hard fight. It's yeah. just, like, a fight. Um, And then you get to keep going. And even in the last question, we already talked about the second question, right? Of, like, you're having trouble achieving your dream. Do you A, a little hard? bit, yeah. Yeah, it's, do you have trouble achieving your dream? Do you work hard at it? Do you do whatever it takes to achieve it or do you give up and get a new dream? And like intuitively the answer feels like it would be work hard at it because Maruki has been worked or, or do whatever it takes because like Maruki literally says that in his like Shibusawa lunch scene where he's like, I'm going to do this no matter what. But then the thing he wants for other people is, well, you should just give up because it's causing you pain. Yeah. And like. I think you're totally right to say like, oh yeah, that's really hypocritical of him because he's he's not practicing what he's pushing on other people. Yeah. Um, it, it, it again goes back to that student thing where he was like, oh, that would cause less problems. So go there, even though it's not maybe what would cause the most happiness. For him, it is right. minimizing the pain. I think there's, you run into like, <clears throat> a streamer who's essentially hate baiting on celebrities for attention also during the sequence, which I mostly wanted to point out because man, it felt like very, very of the moment. But um, yeah, I, I think <clears throat> also adding more than answers and perspectives. Again, it kind of increases the length of things. And I almost wish you could just kind of stand there and get interesting conversations from all the different perspectives talking. I think, I guess that's my solve is if all of the different opinions were just having a conversation with each other, it might yeah. lead to something more interesting, but um, yeah, as it gets larger and, and as it gets more interesting, you also get the ability at some point to uh, like kind of go behind the scenes and see a couple of the wrong answers. Right. Um, but yeah. yeah oh, so the, the, the fifth one, or, or sorry, the third, the third one, one has yeah. five answers, which is the, you can suddenly steal hearts now and no one will ever know or catch you. What hmm. do you do? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, and this one's revealing for a different reason, right? Because there's five answers, which is steal something valuable, never steal anything, steal my own heart, steal evil hearts to change the world, or steal the one, the heart of the one I love. Yeah. Um, and I think the way this works is that you only can get you only talk to two people. I think so. And then yeah. there's two people or there's two behind the scenes things where you can see that they're the wrong answer. Yeah. Um, and so you basically have two choices when it ultimately comes down to it. Cause one of the answers they like in the discussion say is not the correct answer. Yeah. Um, and like 
This one is revealing for a couple different reasons, like this whole ex- question. The steal something valuable is like, well, that person's greedy, right? They're bad. Like, when they know there's not consequences, that's a bad thing, so I want to change them. The never steal anything is like, well, you have the power to change the world and you're not using it. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Um, the steal my own heart, I thought was a really interesting one for the reasoning of why that one is wrong, because the reasoning of why that one is wrong is basically like, if someone admits that they have pain, like, that means that they, like, that's bad of them. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's such a potent message of, like, oh, yeah. That's what he thinks, right? Is, like, admitting you know that something is, like, wrong with your heart or you're in pain in some way is, like, weakness that needs to be changed is, like, so messed up. Well, and it's so clearly the thing he can't do. He cannot yes. admit that there is wrong, like, that he has done wrong or that there is pain in his heart. He can't, because he has the power to change things, that's all that matters now. Right. Uh, there's Steel Evil Hearts, which is, you know, the correct answer, but also on top of being the correct answer, it's also, like, it lines up with a lot of the confidant questions with him or confidant stuff with him about the phantom thieves where like he's very clearly does support the phantom thieves right like if this was a wrong answer he would it would be implying that he thinks what you're doing is bad but like he doesn't he actually does think what the phantom thieves are doing is good and he kind of probably sees himself uh, in that vein yeah because because if you don't give it too much thought you changing a single person's cognition to realize that they were doing wrong erases pain for people right but it it's it's different from erasing their react like it's it's showing people the error of their rate their ways but he doesn't think of it that way he just sees it as well you're altering a reality for someone yeah and then the last one the steal the heart of the one i love is similarly just selfish right it's it's yeah. similar to the valuable one um I got this one wrong the f- this time. I think I did never steal anything. Okay. Um, I think. Yeah. Because those were the kind of the two choices were never steal anything or steal evil hearts were like yeah. kind of what it came down to. Um, but you can almost immediately, you get a treasure chest, right, for, for doing the right thing. And you can just immediately kind of go through a side room and get the treasure chest anyway. Yeah, um, I, I did it wrong out of curiosity because I was like, there's almost nothing the game can give me at this point that would like fundamentally change what I'm playing. So let me just see what it's like to get it wrong. So I did it wrong just out of curiosity. Um, but yeah. then, yeah. I think and then I just... you can hear that you can hear that treasure chest jingling through the oh, wall. Oh, yeah. And then uh, my Morgana eyes went diamondy, and I had to find it. But yeah. And Ryuji, I love that Ryuji gets this one right right away. He walks up and he sees the five answers, and he's like, "Oh yeah, steal evil hearts. Why? Why would you do anything else?" And the entire time they're like, "Ryuji, it's not that simple." And then it is that simple. <laughs> there are really good Ryuji moments this week, and in this palace in general. It's it's been a very yeah. good Ryuji time. Yeah. Uh. So. The thing that you learn is that they, they're strapping these, like, weird VR headsets onto people to give them treatment. It's, like, very clockwork orangey almost, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and there's the treatment room where this is a section where you have to go find the videotape. You find the video room before you find the videotape. Mm-hmm. You gotta go find the videotape. Fun little, you know, run around dodging Fafnir's and, put, like, rummaging through boxes section. Uh, there's also this section is also the part where they suddenly introduce a brand new thing that has not been in the game, which is like a note that you pick up. And oh can yeah, read and it's like got a whole new animation <laughs> with this note, and you're like, where did this come from? It's so weird because it's like a <clears throat> excuse me, like a classic visual novel thing, or yeah. like an older. Like what I would think of a PS One era Persona game would do, and it's like, oh okay, sure. Yeah, it just comes out of nowhere, and they only use it one other time, and then like never again. I like, I guess, hats off to them for not doing a bunch of in-game lore drops, where like most of it just comes from conversations. But yeah, I was like, oh, I guess you could have done this the whole time. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, you have to do a big fight. You find the tape, uh, and then this is the tape that is most sort of like messed up to me (laughs) where you know the conversation about like we don't know if maruki was doing this intentionally we don't know if he was doing this subconsciously this is the tape that completely 
wipes away all of those cons- or those questions, right? Yeah. Where it's his first meeting with, at the time, Sumire, uh, and he's doing his counseling thing and getting her to open up, and he realizes that he what she wants, and she says, like, I wish Sumire could just be alive or whatever. And then he just does it. Yeah. Like, he just actively, intentionally makes her think she is Kasumi on their first meeting. No, oh, yeah. No prompting and very little effort to try to, like, help her in any tangible way without that ability. Yeah. And it's super messed up. <laughs> this feels like I walked into a therapy session to talk about, like, my grief and walked out hypnotized to go yeah. be a oh, commando. Yeah, exactly. It's wild. Yeah, like, it's without really, my permission. It's really dark yeah. when you think about, like, the implications of it. Oh, yeah, like, uh, on a on a therapeutic level, it's a total, obviously, like, uh, breaking of, of trust that is supposed to be inherent in that sort of relationship. But, yeah, it's also, like, he totally violates her boundaries as just a human being and it's like yeah i'm just gonna alter your mind don't worry about it and he's like i i wrote like four times in my notes this is so messed up this is so messed up because he's just like just consider kasumi for me tell 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 me you know about her imagine her in your mind tell me why you would want to become her perhaps all these just you know leading questions and then i will like i do love their sort of the transition moment because as soon as the camera started moving i'm like yeah they're gonna do it and it's like the behind the back of maruki and then after it it wipes past him she is in kasumi mode and just changed yeah. and like it's a really great a well edited scene and, a, and a, a, yeah. a really well done scene but yeah it just so shows you man he just did that and did not care it also exposes the lie of like he kept hammering home, like, she wants this. She mm-hmm. wants this. She wants to be Kasumi, and you're stop. You're trying to stop her, right? And she even has the moments where she's like, I have to be Kasumi, right? But, like, she did not ask for that, right? She just was talking in a therapy session, yeah. and he was encouraging her, saying, you never have to apologize for anything you say here. And then he did that to her. And, of course, she kind of, like wanted to hold on to it yeah but like him him so forcefully being like this was her decision is super super misleading and wrong oh yeah earlier on it's one thing for in a therapy session for a therapist to be like working through someone's issues possibly identity crises and work with them to help you know break that down it's another to be like oh yeah, you should be this person. It would be like, you know, yeah. obviously with someone who doesn't have that power being like, what if you did just go around for a while pretending to be them? Like, what if yeah. you could become them? And and he Very just has the power up. to make it happen in their brain. But it's like, that would be the extent of you going to a therapy session and being like, I miss this person. Well, what if you could be them? I don't know. Just perhaps change your appearance for a bit and walk around. Like, that would be in- so insane. That person would be <laughs> fired immediately if that was found out. But he just happens to have a supernatural power. That makes it much worse. I wonder if this is, like, millennial horror. Yeah. Like, like you know how, like, older generations are like, what if you're hitchhiking and you get murdered, right? And it's like, we don't have hitchhiking anymore. We have therapy. And this is our version of that. <laughs> yeah, what if you had a really messed up therapist? Which is, like, again, this is not obviously an indictment of the therapy community. No, no, no. Because therapy is wonderful. And this is very much showing, like, a bad version. Like, this is not saying yeah. this is... What's really interesting is, like, I do think he was helpful in a lot of ways throughout some of the therapy sessions and I think doing some good things. And I do think there was a healthy portrayal of therapy and how ha- its impact on people. And I don't necessarily think the game is saying therapy is bad. No, no, it's, no, no, no. It's just sort of saying, here's what happens with someone sort of deluded in their power. Like what if, what if a therapeutic power became a supernatural power in the wrong hands and here's kind of what happens it's like a really really interesting complex thing because i do even think just our general discussions of therapy have evolved so much in just even the last couple of years um, yeah it's so, yeah. it, it definitely i think to that point it definitely walks a fine line of like if you make him too evil like the message of all that positive stuff earlier becomes distorted in a way that is not good yeah but i think they do a good job of like keeping that stuff kind of distinct where like the conversations that you have early on with maruki 
do still feel good and important and right. And, and with the other characters, too. Like, they all come yes, out of it being yes, like, yes, it, was, a, yeah. it was good to talk about this thing. And, like, it is helpful. And, I, like, I don't think him being this messed up individual in this way takes away from that. It's just an interesting sort of complex thing of, like, okay, well, what if that person also was capable of this? And yes. was dealing with their own trauma that they probably should have gone to therapy for. Right. Right. Um... So that's the treatment room area. You finish that up, and then there's this sort of... The last section of this at P- uh, Palace is, in my opinion, probably one of the better or best puzzle sections in terms of, like, genuine, just, like, actual puzzles. Sure. Uh, which is these flower bridges and flower walls where you got to change the colors, you know, change the light colors to either grow bridges or ungrow walls, and you have to mix and match colors to do different things and it's sort of this little maze of like getting across bridges and finding secrets and going to other places and doing things and uh i got through this area very quickly this time because i knew how it all worked having played it already sure i didn't remember exact solutions or anything but like i i knew i knew what to expect so i kind of got quick through it quicker but it's not like it's not super easy. No, right? I like I, I got turned around a few times for sure. Yeah. Some of it my own doing. Like there was definitely I think my last exit I basically needed to find a red dial that was further back and I just kept being like, "Okay, but if I change the blue here, maybe it'll get me to a red over there." And it was like literally if I had just done one other thing, I would have been able to do it much more easily. But yeah, I yeah. think it's I think it's overall set up well to be both complex and a little bit confusing intentionally, but satisfying to solve and i i think the fact that this was made for royal and so the addition of the will seed sort of section of it as well doesn't feel thrown in like it's very much built into this area because it was all built at the same time it's not like they had to build the will seed you know on top of an existing place but if it it doesn't it adds more fun complexity in a different way because there's a little bit more uh like hopping around that you can do over there like almost platforming yeah. wise so i i really enjoyed this puzzle i i had told you i had a little bit of trouble with it because i started it very late at night uh and then right. just did it the next day it was fine but uh <laughs> yeah i really really enjoyed solving this one it felt like a good evolution of an it felt like the better version of the puzzle everyone hates in okumura's palace yeah which i was is, gonna say the exact same thing which is really interesting because i like that is, I think, the puzzle that gets the most maligned out of the game, the section of any palace that people hate the most. Uh, yes. For the most part. Obviously, they're not everyone, but just in general what I hear. But this is sort of a similar puzzle, but I think it's yeah. it's more legible and uh, fair to solve because you do, at the end of the day, get those top-down views. You can change your views so you can see how things might change. You can see where existing colors are on or off and what that would do to turn them on. I think that adds a lot of uh, fairness to this puzzle. Yeah, I agree. I think it is, I mean, it. yes, it is exactly opening and closing pathways with buttons that are in multiple areas and change different color pathways, right? Like, it is It is a almost identical sort of puzzle system. Uh, I also think this area is just prettier, though, right? Oh, like totally, the, yeah. Visually, it's a really cool area, and all the growing plant stuff is really... Um, I, I just like that a lot. Well, as I, so, I, I was yeah. just going to say, as I said earlier, like we're getting into his Garden of Eden sort of thing. So it is like things are starting to be beautiful in a way, like a very opulent sort of look to everything. Yeah. Although you do get to the will seed in this area and yeah. you're like, oh boy, ready for a big fight. And it's just another Fafnir. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's Which I thought was funny. It, it is definitely funny. I wish, I will say, like, in terms of those mandated battles, I wish there was a little more variety in them. Sure. Um, but, Rather yeah. than Fafnir's. Rather than just fa- faffing it up with Fafnir. Yeah, um, basically. That's, that's my new talk show. Um, <laughs> he's, my, he's a wonderful co-host, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I think this was a, a more satisfying puzzle to solve because of that more fairness to it. You can get turned around very easily. You can kind of... I think if you get frustrated, it's one of those puzzles where if you let yourself get frustrated, you will continue to mess it up. Yeah, um, it, it's it can you can hit literal walls in it, right? Yeah. Figurative and literal. And yeah. uh, I, I don't blame anybody who got frustrated by this puzzle. I I understand it, but I also I just like I enjoy puzzles like this, and yeah. I enjoyed figuring this one out. No, totally, me too. Um, yeah. that's the last area. You move on. You do a little fight, 
Uh, and then you get to, like you said, this like Garden of Eden paradise where everyone that he's changed is literally floating, ascending into paradise. Yeah. And you get, you know, you touched on this already, but you get a full sense of how distorted he thinks the, the work he is doing is, right? Oh, yeah. He really believes that he is like bringing people into the promised land with what he's doing. And yeah. it's, uh, it's very kind of diluted. Oh, yeah. Um, we're, we're in full, I am... I am a god mode, you know? It yes. is the, like, he took the place of the the Holy Grail. This kind of pays that off to a certain extent. Yeah. So you guys leave. You secured the palace. We do the, get the... one more tape. We get one more tape? Yeah. Oh, yes, you do. I'm sorry. Yes, of course. You do right before... <laughs> Come on, Tom. Right before the pra- the palace area, you get uh, Maruki confronting his old professor right at the university, uh saying, here's your evidence, I have it all, and the guy being like, basically. Um, And on top of that, he also blames Shido. So we get some context that this is right around, this is right after Shido has, you know, admitted everything. And he says, Shido was the one who cut down, shut down my research, you're working for him, and the professor basically admits it. Um, And then the sky outside turns red, and it turns out it's the day you must find me summon yeah that me. that happens too uh and what gets explained i think they explain this a little like after the video but basically what happens is because you can only awaken to a persona in mementos and mementos when the god of control took over mementos in the real world merged suddenly maruki who had or sorry in the metaverse suddenly yeah. maruki who'd never been to the metaverse could awaken to his persona properly because they were the same place now. Yeah. So that happens, and he suddenly realizes exactly what he has to do and has the control to do it and all that stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's a it's a formative moment, and I really like this moment because it's not in the past. I love that this is showing a scene from his perspective that it directly relates to events of the game. Yeah. It's one of those great things. I forget... I'm trying to think of an example, but I know other things have done it where it's basically the, like, seeing a day from another character's perspective that isn't a right. I Man, the only example that's coming to my brain, I, I don't know why it's the only one, but the beginning of Batman v Superman, where you see Batman seeing the day Superman had his big fight, right. and he's like, oh, I gotta stop Superman now. That's basically, what, like, the sort of, oh, the, this other thing's happening, but now I get to do my thing. Um, but, yeah, I, I like seeing this totally with you in sort of the both the timeline of it and just the interesting nature of Maruki having this, his, his, his persona is very silly and his like tentacle is like, I'm, I am the other you, you should come to me. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. man, our sen is so much cooler, dude. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's really great there. I, I put down something you were mentioning, I guess this is the only other time this has happened. You were mentioning toward the beginning of how I was like in conspiracy theory, uh, you know, Pepe Silvia mode. Um, <laughs> there was a moment I wrote down, and I don't know if it means anything, but I can I share okay. it with you? Yeah, please. I just want to say, after all of this happened, it's, again, it goes back to the group, and they're like, oh, wow. We, you know, we finally understand why he has these these powers and understands how to use them and all this. And someone mentions, like, it's just as Lavenza told us, which we had said a few weeks ago. It was like, it's very obviously what Lavenza is saying, even though she's like, I may be wrong on some of the details. Right, like, right, you're, right. you're not wrong. But anyway, I just really thought it was interesting and again i don't know if it's just dialogue that they needed to cover because of the translation but haru is like very surprised at all the coincidences that's all i'm gonna say and there was just like a moment where haru was like hmm there seems to be a lot of coincidences with all of this happening that like his transformation happened on the day that they were defeating the holy grail and all this sort of stuff and like learning the details that it was so serendipitous and again my my two things are i don't know if that plays into the the end game much at all if it doesn't, and this is me having a very cursory glance at a wiki page a month ago at the end of the base Persona 5 story, of it's just sort of the the concept that there are higher powers at work in general in the Persona universe, and this right. is sort of their machinations at work. I don't know which one it is. We can obviously discuss after the game and if, if I'm wrong or right on either of those, but that just stood out to me. Yeah. that. Uh, can I tell you the truth? I'm... I don't remember the end of this very well. Yeah, hell yeah. There we go. (laughs) 
good. I remember the big picture things okay. that, that are about to happen. I do not remember the nitty gritty stuff super well. Cool. My my thinking, and this is genuinely not a spoiler for anything else Persona because I haven't played the other games, but my thinking is it really does play into sort of just this overarching concept that there are larger powers at work because that's something that I well, know Persona fans love but isn't a huge part of fun. And we can talk about that coming up if we want to talk. I don't know about what you did the rest of this week. Um, anyway. Okay. Uh, potentially. Okay. So uh, that's the end of this. Yeah. They leave. The the main kind of last story note on this is that they say, well, Marky is in his palace physically. So how do we, like, send him a calling card, right? And also, we should probably wait until the end for the similar thing with, like, side... Or with the knowing it's coming, right? It needs to make a big impact or whatever. Um, So, yeah, it's it's a little... uh, they're not sure and that doesn't really get answered here but basically you're gonna have to wait till the deadline and they're gonna have to do something different or weird because maruki knows that is is not like anybody that they've faced before and just like giving him a letter is not gonna help especially when he's not in the real world yeah um well so yeah it brings up the funny thing to me of like they could do a really cool you know i and again i don't know what's gonna happen but i guess they could do a really cool like here We're going to blast a message across all of the city and make everyone know, like do it in some cool way. I could, if he notices that that's happening, he could just change cognition so that no one knows that it happened. (laughs) So yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Cool cool palace. (laughs) That's the palace. Yeah. That's the palace. That's the palace. We never have to talk about a palace ever again. Don't Um, say it like that. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Let's talk about the week, though, because there is some stuff that I want to touch on uh, in some of the stuff that I did this week. Cool. Uh, it's more than just free time, even though it is full of free time. Uh, what did you do that evening? You said you went to the cafe, just like a jazz cafe. Like, I went, we can speed through that if you want. Sure. I went to the jazz club that night with Haru because, like I said, life will cost too much, and I needed to chip away at that. So, yeah, I went to yeah, the jazz club that night. That's fair. Although it doesn't always no. give SP, right? No, it, but it was more of a risk. So I, I would do Haru like two nights and then do someone else two nights. Someone else was kind of the jazz club rotation. So on the 24th, uh, I got into my new hobby of the week, which is fishing. Ooh, fun. The fishing minigame is actually pretty amusing. Uh, I'm excited to find out if I can get the mysterious fish that uh, I just got bait for at the end of all of this. Anyway, oh. I only have like two days to do it. <laughs> Good luck. Fish four times oh in God. two days. No, um, I went fishing... And then in the evening, I went to the jazz cafe with Futaba, which cool. was fun because it was I, I it was like giving luck. I think that day, yeah. and I wanted to get her luck up. Her luck's at like ninety one now for me. Oh which my is god, great. that's awesome! Yeah. Um, what are the twenty fifth? Did you slack off in class and read a book? I slept. I don't okay. have any books to read. <laughs> I, I I read. I'm still. I've got like four more books from the library that I need to read. Oh, I but keep I don't forgetting. Think I'm gonna do it. I forget about the library. I yeah. should have done that more. Anyway, yeah, I slept in class, and then during the day, I found a new target in Akihabara for mementos. I right. went and did that, and then I hung out with Sumire to get to rank 10. Gotcha. I also maxed Sumire this day. This is why I didn't go to the palace on the 24th, is because I wanted to max Sumire before it. Smart, yeah. Um, so I maxed Sumire, which is great, uh, and... Her transformation, I can't remember... Oh, no, she doesn't get a super ability, right? Because this isn't her, like, third or whatever. Yeah. Um, this is just her normal transformation. Yeah. Um, and then in the evening, I went to the Jazz Cafe with Haru, because she's too. my girlfriend. Not because of that, but yeah. Well, you're friends. It's great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I need, I need her to protect us more. Yeah. Uh, and then on the 26th... Uh, I lied. I did have one book left, apparently. So I read Flowerpedia on the train. <laughs> Because why not? <laughs> Just why not at this point? Flowerpedia. Dude, my favorite thing is all these places like 777 texting you being like, would you come into work today? It's very busy. And you're like, nah, man. I got 7 nah, million dog. yen. I'm good. Yeah. Can I buy your business? Because I'm okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, met with everyone at the cafe or so I thought because Sumire shows up early because she had an epiphany and we get a showtime, but I haven't seen it yet. Oh, uh, yeah, I did uh, see it. Uh, I think you get it. I think you get it uh, 
after you've maxed her. Yeah. I will. So I have used it. Okay. I don't spoil it for me. I will try to get it to show up in the, the end of the palace. Yeah. Hopefully you can. Hopefully. But otherwise, yeah. Google it. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Um, um, so this was the 26th? Yeah. So. Does that, that mean you went to Mementos today? Uh. No. Or what did I do on that day? <clears throat> I tried to send the calling card? Maybe. So what's weird is. I don't have written down what I did during the day, so I might have gone to Mementos for some extra stuff. But what I was going to point out, there was a a text chain. Mm. Uh, And Futaba, as my phone wrote, Futaba ducking drags Ryuji. There's just this this text chain where they're talking about, like, not waiting till the final moment. Because Ryuji's like, yeah, this reminds me of, like, Summer Break or, you know, like, moments like that. And Futaba's like, yeah, hopefully you just don't leave all your work to the last minute like you did at Summer Break, Ryuji. And it's just like, she even, like, mimics him. She's like, oh, you'd be like, oh, it's going to be fine. I don't need to worry. And then you have to worry, you idiot. And it's, like, so hard. It's great. but Like, it's, it's a level of comfortableness of very close friends or like a, a brother sister relationship but it's just so funny where they're like oh yeah Futaba's just gonna be a total total dick to ryuji and it's really funny yeah there's a moment too in another text where like samire asks for help on a thing and yusuke is like ryuji will help you and ryuji's like don't volunteer me yeah it's so great it's really funny anyway i don't know i assume i went to mementos that day because i did go to mementos at some point this week uh, and then I did the jazz club with Yusuke at the end because I've been using him a bit as well. Nice. Uh, so that evening, or that day, I did. That was my day. I did the palace, the twenty sixth. Cool. Um, and then that evening, I brought a catchy to the jazz club. Cool. Because um, I just want to keep hanging out with a catchy. That's fair. <laughs> and then twenty uh, seventh, I did my memento strip on the twenty eighth. Okay. So, so did you, let's talk a little about Mementos, because this is the other thing I wanted to talk about, the other main thing I wanted to talk about. Yes, yeah. Um, what did you do in Mementos? Well, so I didn't, because we had texted about it, I didn't get to do the collect enough stamps thing. Okay. I haven't so done you that. you haven't yet. done that yet? No. Okay, then we'll talk about the collect enough stamps thing. A couple retractions. Okay. Uh, last week, I thought it was you had to do all of the stamps. Really what it is is there's like 165 stamps, and you only need like 123 of them. Sure. Um, and then you go to the end of Mementos, and a, a cool thing happens, which I'd highly recommend people see and do. Um, so, yeah, you really don't actually, like, you basically, if you've gotten all the other stamps, you don't need to pick up any in the last area to, to have enough to trigger that. Uh, and then I'm not sure there's actually anything at the end of all of the stamps. But I mm-hmm. might, it might be, like, one of the, like, the Thieves' Den oh, yeah. achievement things. That could definitely be one of that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I didn't, I, I did the requests in Mementos, but, yeah, I didn't do that. Um, yeah, the two requests are, or there's there's two requests two right more, after yeah. you finish the palace, and yeah. they're they're both. One of them is easy to get. The other one is like a little tricky. You have to, you have to talk to, especially for me where it was like I had to talk to the people, and then you got to go talk to somebody else. But I got it on the day that it was snowing, so oh, if it's, okay. you're doing it on the day that it's snowing or raining, the second group of people doesn't show up. Oh. So I had to Google actually like where you get the other one. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think one takes you to Kichijoji where you hear about someone, and then the other is the dad in Akihabara who's spending too much money on an idol. Right. Um, but yeah. So this is the twenty sixth. We're still talking about, or yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, the, I did those requests, and I I think finding them was really cool. I, again, yeah, like weather notwithstanding, but I enjoyed finding them. They were pretty tough fights to my memory, but that was kind of just all I went in for, and then I forgot to do the stamps, and so I backed sure. out. That's uh, fair. Yeah. I mean, I went to Mementos twice this week. Okay. Uh, and yeah. we'll talk about a little bit what I did, actually. Let's let's get to that first. So, yeah. the 27th. I, just uh, out of curiosity, I meditated at the temple. <laughs> oh, cool. Nice. But, yeah. uh, and then went to the jazz club. What does that do again? It's basically another... I've done it this run. It's another version of the gym. It, like, gives right. you some HP and SP. It might give you some other things depending on the day or the month or something that I'm not aware of. But, yeah, it was just, like, gotcha. a, a small boost. Cool. Yeah. Maybe I'll do that at some point. Nah, I'm going to fish. Nah, fish. Keep fishing. And then what'd you, what'd you do? Uh, that day I did... 
Was that the day that everything weird happened? No. Uh, that day I did the batting cages. Sure. Which they added a super hard mode. Oh, where yeah. The ball, the speed of the ball is random. And as it approaches the plate, it vanishes. Oh, my God. So you have to see how fast it's moving and time your swing. That's it's so cruel. Mega hard. Yeah, that it's is. really cool that they added a mode that that's, that's that hard to it. I, I respect, even though that sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, it's really neat. Uh, I did not do well on that one. I hit the ball oh, okay. a couple times. That's my achievement there. Nice, but then nice. I did like the, the hardest, fastest mode or whatever. And I got like a couple home runs there and cool. called it a day. Fair. Yeah. Um, and then I took Haru to the jazz club again because Haru. Nice. And uh, the 28th is the day that I went to Mementos oh, okay. for all this. So this is the day that I did the thing at the end. I maxed out to 90. I got everyone to level 99 because I wanted to. Yeah. Um, Okay, so here's my sad, tragic tale of mementos today. And <laughs> I know I'm it. skipping your, your... I'm sorry I jumped the gun here. Oh, it's but, a, I can blow through my days, so it's fine. Okay. Uh, the the tragedy is you might remember uh, a person named Tom on last week's podcast talking about how they were going to try to max out the compendium. Yes. And talking about this persona that got way stronger based on how many how complete your compendium was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was double, doubles your stats when it's at 100%. That's what okay. it was. A couple tragic mishaps have occurred. Oh, no. Um, that persona is only available if you either bought the most expensive deluxe edition of the game or the $10 DLC in the store. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I don't have access to that one. Which I didn't know before I cool. tried to get all of the personas. Cool, cool. Uh, similar to Barrett, who twe- uh, tweeted at me about this, if you don't have a treasure demon, mm-hmm. it can be a pain to have to go find a treasure demon in Mementos. So I got every persona I could in the compendium, and I was at 99% completion. Mm-hmm. And then I realized that I had one treasure demon missing, and rather than just go grind for it, you can make this item... Mm-hmm. that uh, makes treasure demons more common. Oh, uh, okay. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to be fishing tomorrow anyway, so I might as well come out, make Kawakami make that item, and mm-hmm. then go back the next day and just get the treasure demon real quick and be done. Sure. Um, so that's where I uh, I left my Mementos trip that day. I guess I also did the Reaper, and also, okay. did you notice that there's some crazy hard fights? What do you mean? So they do this thing where after you've defeated the palace in the last area of Mementos, if you go back, occasionally you'll get into a fight that's like low level personas. Oh, I didn't get this. Yeah. So it's like weird. It's really, really cool. So like I got into a fight and I was like insta killing everyone and then I hit a thing and it wasn't an insta kill. And I was like, what? And it was a jack-o'-lantern guy and a jack frost oh wait like, yes yes yeah yeah i did get that yeah yeah and i was like wait what and so i used fire on the jack frost and it absorbed it yeah and i was like wait what they threw in <laughs> and, weird cool fights yeah so this is a the thing they do after you defeated the palace in mementos they add all these old personas in pairs where they are, like, their resistances are really wonky and weird, and they'll, like, drain what they're usually weak against. So wild. And then they have, like, crazy powerful AoE attacks. <laughs> like, it was a harder fight than the Reaper. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was, it is really cool that they do that. I, I had forgotten about that. Yeah, but yeah, as soon as you said that pairing, I remembered seeing a Jack Frost and Jack O'Lantern there and was like, why are they here? And then, yeah, yeah it was like, very strange. You remember that Starfish man? Oh, yes, I ran into them too. Yeah. Yeah, weak to physical. Yeah. Starfish is weak to physical still, but has, like, high counter. So you hit it, you just get blasted back in the face. Yep. Again. It's really funny. Life wall. Very expensive. But, yeah, (laughs) boy, did I use it a lot. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Uh, So that evening... I mm-hmm. did the final trip to Mementos, and then I went to Akechi in the Jazz Cafe. What did you do on the 28th? Because we're almost done. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just hung out with Samire because I was like, maybe there's going to be a third awakening or something. So I just went to hang cool. out with her uh, and gave her a gift. We went to the the pond and, and was on the boat. Uh, and then nice. I went to the Jazz Club with Makoto because I felt guilty that I was taking all these other people, not my girlfriend of the game, to a Jazz Club. So I did yeah. that. Yeah. That's fair. Um... There was something I was going to say. Now it's gone, so I'm okay. going to move on. Fair enough. Uh, the 29th, 
Yes. Well, oh, that's what it was. One of the things I did this week also is uh, went to Chahaya and had her put points into Maruki. Oh, okay. Which doesn't do anything. All right. But it does say, I think your feelings have reached the other person. And that made me feel a little better. Like maybe I was doing something to change his heart. I kind of like the, again, just the headcanon of that of like, oh, it doesn't really change it, but maybe it does a little bit. Yeah, exactly. I dig that. Uh, So on the 29th, what did you do? Uh, I went to darts with Sumire because I didn't get her to rank three yet. So I I was doing that. And then went to the jazz club with Akechi because, again, I know my time with Akechi is fleeting. Okay. Yeah. So... I went back to Mementos, okay. treasure thing in hand, mm-hmm. uh, treasure item. I went to the location of where I could find this treasure demon. Yeah. I used the treasure item. I got, I was ready for a grind. I got into the first fight and it was there and I got it. Oh my God. And That's then amazing. I went back to the velvet room and yeah. I went, so do I have to do something to like make it trigger to like, is there, a, is there not an achievement? No one's saying anything. Mm-hmm. And I looked at the compendium and I was still at 99% and I went, what the heck? And I went through the list and I made sure I didn't have anything missing. And then <sighs> the last persona you get is only available for crafting on new game plus. Oh my God. <laughs> so if you're not playing on New Game Plus, which I have a New Game Plus save file, but I didn't want to use it. Yeah. T- ten months ago, I went, I shouldn't use that. It'll change the experience of the game. And now ten months later, I'm going. <laughs> the the consequences of your actions playing out in full nearly a yeah. year later. That is amazing. So oh, I have man. every persona except for the one you can only craft on New Game Plus. That is crushing. That is yeah. just, I'm sorry. It's okay. All that I'll time and effort. It. Yeah. I guess you'll just have to play Persona 5 Royal again. Yeah. <laughs> God. I'm, uh, I'm going to take a break for a bit, I think. <laughs> You've done three this. playthroughs, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Um, then, uh, wait, it gets better. Oh, no. So Crushed. I go out of mementos Mm -hmm. and I say, you know what? This sucks. Fine. Whatever. And I go to the jazz club and I say, I'm going to bring Morgana to the jazz club. Okay. And it's adorable because Morgana's in the bag sipping on a drink and it's really cute. cute. Yeah. Um, and then you get the ability for that, which is spell master on that day, which is an ability you put on the person you bring that makes their spells cost half mana. Yeah. And I went, Oh, I need to put this on Haru for life wall. Yep. And I went to reload and I realized I hadn't saved after I got the hope diamond treasure demon. Oh my God. So I reloaded. I reused the treasure item. (laughs) You went through the pain again. I found it on the first one again. Oh my God. And then I went, I still have 99 and I left. I still can't do anything. Goodbye. I've I've oh still God. failed. Oh, it's but... like it's like the game wanted you to feel worse. That's amazing. <laughs> That's real good. And then I brought Haru to the jazz club and I gave her Spellmaster. And good. I feel good, good about that. Yeah. Now Life Wall only costs like forty five. Well, hey, and you have a couple days to use it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I have like I have the opportunity to cast it three more times or whatever. Perfect. Yep. Um. What about January 30th? Let's put ourselves out of our misery here. Uh, as the week was coming to an end, and the month as well, uh, I went to the gym, uh, just because I hadn't been in a while, and I wanted to compare what the stats were from the temple and the gym, just out of curiosity. Nice. Uh, and then I went to the jazz club with Sumire at the, the end of the day. Nice. I, uh, I went fishing, of course. catching those medium fish. It was also snowing or raining, so like... Every one of the fish I caught, except for one, had, like, a special tag on it, which was great. Interesting. Fishing nice. is fun. You should go fishing at least once. Yeah, I need to go do that again. Uh, it's silly and cute. And it's one of those things, kind of like the, not literally like the Maid Cafe, but it's one of those things where, like, the more you go, you can, like, start to afford the better bait and catch the bigger fish. And, yeah. You know, I like that. Yeah, I'll definitely try to get um, it. Got nothing else going on. And then I finished off the evening by going to the jazz club with Yusuke. Nice, nice. Just jazz every night. It works. It's so useful at this point in the game. It, like in terms it's quite of quite useful. What to get the most stats up? It's just the best way to go right now. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But yeah, um, yeah, that's our week. That's our week. So we're gonna be back next week with a discussion of 
If you haven't, just full on spoiler real quick, if you have not done the thing at the end of Mementos by next week, we are going to talk about it because I want to talk about it and I'm going to make Jonathan do it. Um, Fair enough. It, like genuinely, I think it's really going to be a fun thing to talk about. Okay. Uh, cool. But next week, we're also going to be talking about the deadline and the calling card and the everything that follows. Cool. A light week. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. Like we said, next week is not going to be the finale of Take Your Time because the game doesn't end <laughs> until mid to late March. The game takes its time on that ending. So yeah. It does. Yeah. So this is not going to be the last episode of the show next week or anything, but it is, uh, for all intents and purposes, kind of the last, like, you know, Packed. big chunk of show where yeah. we're going to be digging into stuff and talking about things. And it'll, we've got some plans for the future, but like, or for, for the intervening weeks or whatever, but like, for now it's, it's a big finale next week. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. We hope you really join fun. us. Um, that said... Yes. Let's wrap up with a couple quizzes. Jonathan, you have a persona pseudonym for me that I'm not going to get I, unless it's Fafnir. I don't think I did it before, hopefully. Uh, but who is the Wandering Reviver? I have... Uh, no. It's not that. I'm trying to think of any of the names I saw or personas I picked up. Because it's not that one. It's not Sarsvati, because I think you can only craft Sarsvati. Oh, I just came up with an amazing joke for this, too, which I'm going to present to you after the fact, and uh, okay. I'll hold for the just, laughter. Say, say the it audience. again, say it again. The Wandering Reviver. Wandering Reviver. This is not that a goof. Make... This is not a... Okay. Oh, it's it's 13 from House. I gotcha. Uh, it's not that. <laughs> I mean, Reviver does feel like a doctor. Well, oh, I was going to say, Wandering Reviver could also be House if he started making house calls. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of any of the personas I physically saw. They are more humanoid, if that helps. No. Cool. <laughs> I literally didn't do a fight in this palace except for, like, Fafnir's, Got pretty him. much. Uh, so, I don't think I have an answer. Well, this is, and again, forgive me if my pronunciation is rough, but, uh, uh, Nibiros, or Nebiros. Oh, okay. In the big, like, sort of orange cloak. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that name. Yeah. <laughs> I think I I think I have them in my party. So, yeah. I, I was familiar with them, but yeah, you probably didn't, you know, see them once. Yeah. Yeah. That's a shame. Oh yeah, I'm I'm sad that over leveling has caused me to not has caused me to miss some of these last few ones. That's that's a bummer. I've just got to think of a good one for next week's. But yeah, um, yeah. What about you? What's your your pop quiz for the week? Well, since this is our last palace, we have our last treasure quiz. Mm, but but yeah, what weird thing did you do? Some of no, it's actually less weird okay. than normal. Some of you might have noticed that uh. You do the final palace of mementos, mm -hmm. and then a bunch of story stuff happens, and then you're in Maruki's palace for a little bit, picking up treasures. And so by the time you can go back to the airsoft shop to sell your treasures, you have a big inventory full of treasures from multiple palaces. And that's very confusing for me personally. Uh-huh. <laughs> also... Because the boss fight went right into the Mementos Palace, we didn't do a treasure quiz for the Mementos one. So, knocking out two birds with one stones. Stones? Wow. This is going great, too. I'm going to name four treasures. Two of them are from the depths of Mementos. While two others are from Maruki's Palace. And you got to tell me which is from which. Oh, God. Okay. So, our treasures are... A laser pointer, a golden cap badge, a silent horn, and a distorted lens. Once again, laser pointer, golden cap badge, silent horn, and distorted lens. And these are all real treasures. I didn't make any of this up. And but two are from Mementos, two are from Maruki? Two of them are specifically from the depths of Mementos. Excuse me, yes. Yeah, yeah. And two of them are from Maruki. Okay. 
I wrote down my answer which now. Which is which? I can Great. confirm I have written down my answer. I will not change it so that if I see answers in the, the chat cool. and comments, I won't be uh, spoiled. Let us know. You can write in at Dornology at gmail.com. You can leave a comment at youtube.com slash Dornology. You can tweet at us. I'm at, at Tom R. Marks. He's at JM Dornbush. We'd love to hear from you. If you enjoy the show, uh, like, subscribe, comment, whatever you can do. It really, We really just appreciate it. We like hearing from people, and we, we like hearing that people like the show. We like hearing from people such as, sorry, I almost played the theme out loud while I went to go to the reviews. And so you would have just heard uh, the music of our show play at the end. Oh no, it won't let me click on our show. Well, anyway, I've seen that there were some new reviews. Here we go. Uh, No, they're not showing up. Tom, I've ruined everything. Anyway, there were new reviews, but they're not showing up on Apple Podcasts, but I did see them and I just wanted to say thank you to those people. I appreciate it. That was art. I'll read them next time. That was performance art. That was me having a breakdown in real time. None of that was planned. It actually <laughs> messed up on me at every step of the way. I'm, I don't know how. Anyway, uh, Morgana is telling us to go to bed aggressively right I now. I don't know what about what I just did implies that I'm tired. Come on, Tom. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Uh, we'll be back to talk about the end of this wild ride or the near end or the, I don't know. It's confusing. the beginning of the end the beginning of the end. Anyway, thanks everybody. We'll see you next time.